हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम रजत अब्रॉय फ्रॉम विजन मेडिकेयर न्यू डेली टूडे वी विल डिस्कस मॉड्यूल ग्रैन्युलेशन टेक्नोलॉजी अंडर पेपर प्रोडक्शन डेवलपमेंट पार्ट वन इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी लर्न अबाउट वन द एडवांटेजेस एंड यूज ऑफ ग्रैन्युलेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इन प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट सेकेंड dry granulation technique and its recent advancement third wet granulation technique and recent advancement in wet granulation technology fourth application merits and demerits of the granulation technologies let us start with introduction granulation a technique of particle enlargement by agglomeration is one of the most significant unit operations in the production of solid oral dosage forms particularly tablets and capsules during granulation small fine or coarse particle are converted into large agglomerates called granules granules used in the pharmaceutical industry have particle size preferably in the range of 200 to 500 micrometers usually granulation commences after initial dry mixing of the necessary excipient along with the active drug so that a uniform distribution of each ingredient throughout the powder mixture is achieved the main purpose of converting powder into granules is first to enhance the uniformity of the drug in the final product second to increase the density of the blend so that it occupies less volume per unit weight for better storage and shipment narrow particle and size distribution of the granules facilitate volumetric dispensing and content uniformity next is to improve flow and compaction characteristics of the powder and lastly to improve the appearance of the product granulation is an exemplary of particle design and of the granules depend upon particle size of the excipients and the drug the volume concentration and type of winder granulation time granulation equipment and drying rate the primary methods by which the granules are formed include solid bridges chemical reaction sintering crystallization and deposition of particles besides binding can also be accomplished through cohesive and adhesive force by utilizing high viscous binders the mechanism by which granules are formed from the powder particle syn compass wetting and nucleation coalescence or growth consolidation and attrition or breakage blend of powders containing excipient and drug can be compressed into tablets either by direct compression or after making granules by agglomeration organulation technique as described in the figure the granulation technique may be categorized into two type based on the type method used to facilitate the agglomeration of powder particles first is the dry granulation second is wet granulation Dry granulation uses mechanical compression or compaction to facilitate the agglomeration of dry powdered particles. Wet granulation uses granulation liquid may be a binder or solvent to facilitate the agglomeration by formation of wet mass by addition. Among the two techniques described, wet granulation is widely used granulation technique despite the fact that it involves complex time consuming and multiple unit process compared to dry granulation the selection of particular process requires thorough knowledge of physiochemical properties of the drug and excipients and required flow and the release properties granulation methodologies like roller compaction fluid bed granulation extrusion and spray drying have been used successfully for preparation of various pharmaceutical dosage forms granulation technology continues to evolve and various improved modified and novel methodologies now are available as described in the module let us start with the first dry granulation 
Dry granulation, also called as compression granulation, is a valuable technique of granulation when the dose of a drug is too high for direct compaction or when the drug is sensitive to heat, moisture or both, which precludes wet granulation. Sensitive drugs like aspirin and vitamins are prepared for tableting by dry granulation. Dry granulation involves the mechanical compression or compaction of the components of a tablet formulation by means of a tablet press or specifically designed machinery followed by milling and screening prior to final compression into a tablet. Dry granulation could be achieved either by slugging or by roller compaction. Slugging involves compaction of blend of powder by means of flat faced punches. The compacted mass is called as slug and the process is referred to as slugging. In slugging, large tablets approximately 2 inch in diameter are made using very heavy duty machines. These tablets may not have good fill weight uniformity but this does not matter because they are broken up in the next step by coarse milling. The slugs are then screened or milled to produce granules which flows more uniformly than the original powder mixture. When a single slugging process is insufficient to confer the desired granule properties to the material, the slugs are sometimes screened, slugged again and the screen to obtain the desired granules. On large scale, compression granules is performed using a specially designed machine called as roller compactor. Roller compactors utilizes two rollers that revolve toward each other. Powdered material is fed between the rollers by a screw conveyor system. The rollers exert known fixed pressure on the powder material that flows between the rollers. After passing through the rollers, the compacted mass resemble a thin wide ribbon that has fallen apart into large segments. These are equivalent to the slugs produced by the slugging process. The segments are then screened or milled for the production of granules. One such roller compactor equipment which is widely used for preparation of granules in the pharmaceutical industry is Chilsonator which is also being showed with the help of a schematic diagram. Since the invent of roller compactor, there has not been much progress in the dry granulation technology in comparison to wet granulation. Except for one important innovation known as pneumatic dry granulation. Let us see what is pneumatic dry granulation. Pneumatic dry granulation is an innovative proprietary technology developed by Atacama Labs Obai. It utilizes roller compaction together with air classification method to produce granules with extraordinary combination of flowability and compressibility. In this method, initially a accompanied mass comprising a mixture of the fine particles and granules are produced by roller compactor. The small granules and or fine particles are separated from the intended size granules in the fractioning chamber by entering in a gas stream and are returned to the roller compaction for recompression. Also refer to the figure. On the other hand, the intended size granules pass through the fractioning chamber to be compressed into tablets. The primary advantage of this technology is that it provides good flowability even with high dosage loads up to 70 to 100 percent. Further, the technology offers high processing speed, little wastage of material, low dust exposure and low cost of production. However, the influence of recycling on the quality of granules and friability problem remains a major issue regarding this technology. Next, let us discuss about wet granulation. Wet granulation is the widely used technique for preparation of granules by wet massing of the excipients and drug with granulation liquid with or without binder. In wet granulation, the powders are bind together due to adhesive interaction instead of compaction. 
addition of a granulating liquid to a mass of powder may be characteristic in the series of stages as illustrated in the figure. Please refer the figure. At initial stage, addition of granulating liquid causes wetting powder particles. Liquid film formed on surface of powder particles may combine to produce discrete liquid bridges at points of contact. The surface tension and negative capillary pressure in such bridges provide the cohesive force and the result in a condition called as the pendular state. At this moment, the granule has low mechanical strength. As the liquid content increases, several bridges may coalesce, giving rise to the funicular state and a further modest increase in the strength of the moist granule. Eventually, as more liquid is added and the mass is needed, the brings particle into close proximity. The void spaces between the granules are entirely eliminated. At this point, bonding is affected by interfacial forces at the granular surface and by a negative capillary pressure throughout the interior liquid filling space, a condition referred to as capillary state. Further, addition of liquid result in droplet formulation in the particles are still held together by surface tension, but without intragranular forces. The capillary state represents the stage with the maximum strength of the wet granulized optimization of many granulation processes involved ensuring that the state has been achieved. While some tablets are still made in the traditional manner, equipment has been developed that can accomplish both dry mixing and wet granulation efficiently and in much less time. New mixer or granulator such as Logi, Diosna and Graal allow several processes of red granulation to be conducted in rapid succession or to be combined in one piece of equipment. These high speed mixer or granulators are provided with secondary chopper blades which function as a lump and agglomerate breaker so that sieving is no longer an essential prerequisite for powder mixing. The method of introducing the binder depends on its solubility and on the components of the mixture. Since, in general, the mass should merely be moist rather than wet or pasty, there is a limit to the amount of solvent that may be employed. Therefore, when only a small quantity is permissible, the binder is blended is in with the dry powders initially. When a large quantity is required, the binder is usually dissolved in the liquid. During granulation, particles and agglomerates are subjected to consolidating forces in large blenders for 15 minutes to an hour. The length of time depends on the wetting properties of the powder mixture and the granulating fluid and upon the efficiency of the mixer. A rough way of determining the end point is to press a portion of the mass in the palm of the hand. If the ball crumbles under moderate pressure, the mixture is ready for the next stage in processing, which is wet screening. The wet screening process involves converting the moist mass into coarse granular aggregates by pass through a small hammer mill or oscillating granulator equipped with screens having large perforations. Overly wet material dries slowly and forms hard aggregates which tend to turn to powder during subsequent dry milling. A drying process is required in all wet granulation procedures remove the solvent that was used in forming the aggregates and to reduce the moisture content to an optimum level of concentration within the granules. After drying, the granulation is screened again. The size of the screen depends upon the grinding equipment and the size of the tablet to be made. Wet granulation has witnessed various technical and innovations which are further described in the module. Now let us discuss reverse wet granulation. Reverse wet granulation involves the immersion of the dry powder into the binder liquid followed by controlled 
breakage to form granules. According to this technology, the drug was mixed with a solution of binder to form a drug binder slurry as a granulating fluid. Granules were then formed by immersing a mixture of other dry excipients into the drug binder slurry. Advantage of this method is that it gives better dissolution results, especially with poorly water-soluble drugs. Additionally, tablets formed from these granules eroded more uniformly during dissolution compared to usual wet granulation technique. This process produced granules with lower intragranular porosity and a greater mass means diameter at lower binder concentrations when compared to the conventional wet granulation. Please also refer to the schematic diagram. Next, we will discuss about steam granulation. In steam granulation, steam is used as a binder instead of liquid water. The advantage of using steam as binder is that it provides uniform distribution and higher diffusion rate into the powder particles resulting in production of spherical granules with large surface area and shorter processing time. Another advantage is that it has a more favorable thermal balance during drying. Upon condensation, steam forms a hot thin film on the powder particles requiring only a small amount of extra energy for its elimination and evaporates more easily. An equipment such as high shear mixture coupled with a steam generator would be enough for this technique. Although the granules produced by this process have higher dissolution rate due to increased surface area, but this process is not suitable for thermolabile drugs and is not processed with all type of binders. Please also refer to the schematic diagram to understand more on steam granulation. Next is Moisture Activated Dry Granulation This technique also known as Moist Granulation Technique use very little amount of water to activate a binder and initiate agglomeration. The first step of the technique is wet agglomeration of the powder particles followed by next step where moisture absorption or disruption occurs. Agglomeration is enabled by adding a small amount of water, usually less than 5% to the mixture of drug, excipients and binder. Agglomeration takes place when the granulating fluid activates the binder. Once the agglomeration is achieved, moisture absorbent such as silicon dioxide or microcrystalline cellulose is added to facilitate the absorption of excess moisture. Addition of moisture absorbents result in moisture redistribution within the powder mixture, leading to relatively dry granulate mixture. During the moisture redistribution process, some of the agglomerates remain intact in size, while some larger agglomerates may break leading to more uniform particle size distribution. This process avoids expensive drying step. The process does not lead to a larger lump formation and particle size of the agglomerates usually range from 150 to 500 microns since the amount of water used is very small compared to usually wet granulation. The granules prepared via the technique has increased particle size, better flow and compressibility. Also refer to the schematic diagram. Additional advantages include time efficiency, less energy input, involvement of few process variables and wide acceptability. However, this technique could not be used for processing when dose of drug is high or when drug moisture sensitive or hygroscopic owing to stability and processing problems associated with these types of drugs. 
a high shear mixture coupled with sprayer would be suitable equipment for the moist granulation process. Next, let us discuss about thermal adhesion granulation. Thermal adhesion granulation utilizes addition of small amount of granulation liquid and heat for agglomeration. Unlike moist granulation which uses water alone as granulation liquid, this process uses both water and solvent as granulation liquid. In addition to this, heat is used to facilitate the granulation process. In this process, the drug and excipients are heated at about 30 to 130 degrees Celsius in a closed system under tumble rotation to facilitate the agglomeration of the powder particles. The use of limited amount of solvent eliminates the drying process. Granules of the required particle size can be obtained after cooling and sieving. This technique is quite simple and easy to use with low moisture and binder contents for preparing highly compressible materials or for modifying the poor characteristics of excipients. Also refer to the schematic diagram. Beside this technique provides granules with wetter particle size, good flow properties and high tensile strength that could be directly compressed into tablets with adequate hardness and low friability. High energy inputs and requirements of special equipment for heat generation and regulation are few of the limitations of the technique. Now let us understand melt granulation. Melt granulation also called as thermoplastic granulation is a technique that facilitates the agglomeration of powder particles using binders which melts or softens at low temperature range of about 50 to 90 degrees Celsius followed by cooling and the consequent solidification of the molten binder to complete the granulation process. Low melting binders can be added to the granulation process either as a solid that melt during the process, a process called as an in situ melt granulation or in the form of molten liquid as a spray on. Optionally, drugs can be dispersed in the molten liquid binder. The in situ melt granulation includes heating a mixture of drug, binder and other excipients to a temperature within or above the melting range of the binder. In contrast, the spray-on procedure encompasses spraying of a molten binder onto the heated blades. Melt granulation is suitable alternative to other wet granulation techniques which are used for water sensitive materials. The biggest advantage of this method is that the aqueous or organic solvents are not demanded and hence the environment requirements of solvents capture and recycling are eliminated. While the absence of water excludes the wetting and drying phases, making the entire process less time and energy consuming. Melt granulation method could be efficiently applied in order to improve the poor physical properties of the drug substance and further to enhance the stability of moisture sensitive drug. The major drawback of this process is the need of high temperature during the process which can cause degradation of the thermolabile drugs. The binders used for this process could be either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. However, the selection of a meltable binder with a hydrophilic or hydrophobic feature is critical factor for the dissolution behavior of the drugs. Please also refer to the schematic diagram. Owing to the numerous advantages of this technique over conventional wet granulation process, the interest in melt granulation has increased. Now let us discuss about freeze granulation. Freeze granulation technology also called as spray freezing involves spraying droplets of a liquid slurry or suspension into liquid nitrogen followed by freeze drying of the frozen droplets. By spraying a powder suspension into liquid nitrogen, the drops are instantly frozen as granules. 
and in the subsequent freeze drying process the granules are dried by sublimation of ice without any segregation effects the main advantage of this process is that it yields spherical free flowing granules that could be formed by using both water and organic solvent the suspension quality always determines and reflects the granule quality in terms of homogeneity using this process the structure and homogeneity of the particles in the slurry or suspension are retained in the granules this technology is particularly useful for the preparation of granules that needs to be prepared from suspensions whose particle size and homogeneity need to be preserved although variety of materials in dispersed form can be granulated using this technology it is suitable for the preparation of fine powder mixes the powders prepared using this technology possess superior aerosol performance due to favorable aerodynamic properties also please refer to the diagram the major advantage of this technology include a preparation of granules with no cavities b ability to control the granule density through the solid content of the suspension c use of heat sensitive compounds due to mild grinding procedure d high product yield due to low waste of material e high degree of granule homogeneity due to absence of migration of small particles and lastly possibility of recycling organic solvents given the ability of this technology to maintain size and homogeneity sooner or later it will benefit the formulation of redispersible parenteral formulations nanoparticles self emulsifying drug delivery systems and liposomes although organic solvents with suitable freezing points that is minus 25 to plus 10 degree celsius can be used water as medium is preferred in the process which could be a limiting criteria given the poor solubility of various drugs and processing excipients now let us discuss about foam granulation foam granulation analogs to spray agglomeration addition of binder solution as foam instead of spraying or pouring liquid onto the powder particles adding the binder solution as a foam rather than a spray alleviates the problem of unpredictable and inconsistent binder distribution that can affect tablet hardness and drug release this technology exploits the characteristics of the foam binder to successfully improve the distribution of binder onto the powder particles even at a binder amount lower than that required in the conventional spray granulation method this is due to the fact that the surface area and volume of the foam binder solution is remarkably high compared to the spray water most importantly the sprayed liquid droplets have a low spread to soak ratio which means they tend to soak into powders and cause overwetting rather than spreading onto the surface of the powder particles requiring high levels of water and binder and eventually long drying rates to remove excess water in contrast foamed binders have a high spread to soak ratio and because of this the binders are coated onto the particles rather than soaked leading to a less amount of binder and more consistent binder distribution these factors improve the reproducibility and shorten the processing time due to the involvement of low amount of water and short time water sensitive drugs could also be processed using this technology additionally this technology would prove useful for potent drugs due to its ability to distribute drugs evenly further this technology eliminates the use of spray nozzles and its related clogging problems and processing variables standard equipment such as shear mixer or fluid bed granulator could be used for this technology 
in association with a foam generator. A foam generator can be installed in the binder solution tank to introduce the binder's foam onto the moving powder particles. Although this technology merits in countless ways further understanding of process parameters, foam quality, etc. needs to be explored. Please also refer to the diagram for explanation. Now to conclude the module, technological innovation that improve and ease existing processes could contribute to improved processability and quality of the formulation in addition to a considerable impact on the product development, time and economy. Obviously, the pharmaceutical granulation technique have improved over the years. Nevertheless, efficient, cost-effective processes have always been the keen interest of the pharmaceutical industries. Each technique has its own merits and limitation, and the type of technique and technology selection requires thorough knowledge of physiochemical properties of the drug, excipients, required flow and release properties, etc. in addition to the granulation technique and technologies itself. During the formulation development, each drug substance poses a unique challenge that must be taken into consideration, the process selection stage by the formulation development scientist. In the pharmaceutical industry, although various technologies have been introduced from time to time, only few have emerged as successful for real-time utilization due to different kind of hurdles such as manufacturing, efficiency, economy, regulatory issues, etc. The new technologies discussed in this module would need enhancement in terms of equipment, process, etc. before being industrialized successfully. Nevertheless, these could provide a platform for future technological innovation. Thank you.